All right, welcome to Option Boot Camp session number two, special ed edition with my friend Chris. And we're going to be, he missed the first one because, you know, I, he needed, I told him that he wanted this concierge level of service. And after it starts, <laughs> he wants me to email him. And I got like 20 other people that are starting on time. So sorry, Chris, but I hope I make it up to you by having the makeup session. You're awesome, Bill. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. It, it comes with champagne that should have been delivered. I don't know. If, why didn't you? Did you get it? No. That, okay. I'm sorry. I, I right. apologize. <laughs> yeah. Maybe my wife drank it because she had to <laughs> <laughs> is She Is she acting a little loopy? All right. So this is a uh, session. Does, does, does it make a difference then, <laughs> if she drink or not? She's per perma loopy. She's yeah. perma loopy. <laughs> she married me. <laughs> yeah, that says a lot. It says a lot. <laughs> yeah, sorry, go ahead. So in the first session, we've covered selling naked puts and how to turn that into a wheel strategy uh, by selling covered calls once you get assigned on it. Today, we're focused on a bearish strategy. So the last time we learned a bullish strategy. So what I'm doing is this time we'll learn a bearish strategy. Bearish means you kind of want it to go down or stay unchanged, at least in this point. And then I'm going to show you how to turn this into the reverse wheel by selling covered shorts if you should get assigned. So then on the next one, we'll do poor man's covered calls, which is a bullish strategy. And then we'll do poor man's covered puts, which is a bearish strategy. Then we'll do strangles and straddles, which is a neutral strategy. And then we'll turn it into iron condors, which is a neutral strategy that's a defined risk trade. And then finally, we'll learn diagonals. So that's kind of where we're going in the seven week uh, boot camp. So our agenda is, uh, I want to ask you, Chris, what have you learned since we last met? And it's kind of impossible to slide into the woodwork, uh, you know, and not participate since it's just one on one. Right? What have you learned since we last met? Well, hey, I, uh, I learned how to do, I learned how to sell puts. Obviously, it's a very elementary level, right? I mean, right. I, there, there's some there's some stocks that, that I've invested in um, that I've done really well with, but I'm really bullish on. So I'm probably going to expand my portfolio of investments and um, continue selling puts on those that I'm very bullish on. But I'm interested right. in learning about the ones that um, I'm kind of bearish on. Sure. And that's what I look forward to learning. Yeah, because this will give you some balance. Because the first week, all you were able to do is do some bullish stuff. And... If you notice, there was several days last week the market went down, so it'd be nice to kind of have some balance, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as, as we've talked about before, our plan is every week you'll learn a new uh, trade and you'll practice that. So we're following the process of tell, show, let you try, praise your progress, which is the four steps of, of good coaching. So we'll be learning today about selling naked calls and the accountability plan is just go on Slack, ask questions, follow your development plan. If uh, you remember what that is, we'll just kind of help fill in some of the missing gaps around some of the basics. So here's our leaderboard performance. And I, I want you to know that Juice Ball, OJ, was like number one. And then in 30 minutes later, he wasn't even on the top 10. Yeah. <laughs> and so the real question was, you know, what happened to OJ? <laughs> no, not that OJ, our OJ, Johnny Juice Ball, and two words, a PLTR and MARA, which are more speculative. And what's interesting is he slopped out of the top 10. And then this was, session was planned on Thursday and then came back to Friday and he's back in first place again. So, uh, call it gambling, call it volatility, uh, but there's been some swings in his portfolio. So what caused, in, in on Thursday, what caused our naked puts to go down on Thursday? I don't know if you noticed that, but there was some, um, several of them or most of them went down. And so to what would you attribute that? Uh, I'd attribute it just to the fact that some companies are, are going public in this market swings and it's just a normal dynamic about um, the way information flows and people don't necessarily act using logic to act on emotion and they may take gambles. 
Well, 53% of the time the market goes up, 43% of the time the market goes down. And on Thursday, um, markets went down. And when you're working with a bullish strategy and the market goes down, you could affect uh, your portfolio to go down. Now, your theta decay will help to cushion that. So yeah. uh, remember, your theta decay was something like eighty-three dollars a day, or something like that, right? Oh, thirty-eight dollars. Oh, thirty-eight dollars. So let's assume that the market goes down twenty dollars. Eighty-three minus twenty, you could still make sixty-three dollars, even though the market went down slightly, right? Or even though it was yeah. unchanged, you could make that. So the, another th reason why uh, our puts went down is because the VIX went up and VIX is also a measure of, it's called the fear index, which is a measure of volatility. And so when volatility goes up, I think I've told you and Brandon this is it's kind of like um, bad weather slows down Dallas traffic or usually it does. In Chicago, I'm sure you'd speed up, but in Dallas, we slow it down. Um, when, and so when fear increases, it just kind of takes a lot of theta and it kind of sucks it in. It's kind of like a gravitational pull. So you'll, you'll see some temporary losses in your portfolio, but when that fear relaxes, then it starts to flow back to you. So it's the interesting thing about uh, the fear index. And when volatility goes up, theta decay gets jammed up like a traffic jam. And as the perception of fear goes up, our option prices become uh, more expensive. And when options we've sold become more expensive, we lose. As fear relaxes, traffic continues to use the flow and we get paid again. So this was kind of what VIX looked like on, 30, on uh, Thursday. Um, and you can kind of see it peaked up at 24. It started relaxing a little bit, but for the day, it was still up um, a little over 3%. So uh, it was at 22.22. And there have been entire years, let's say a couple of years ago before COVID hit, like in 2019, where most of the year the VIX was below 10 or 12. So uh, that's typically when the market goes down, VIX tends to move up somewhat. Um, trivia question. When you sell a naked put, what do you hope and ha hope happens to the stock by expiration? And this is a multiple choice question, Chris. A, you hope the stock goes down. B, you hope the stock <laughs> goes up. C, you hope the stock stays unchanged. Or D, either B or C. And, is it and or uh, but it's definitely D. D is the correct yeah. answer. You hope either the stock goes up or it stays unchanged. And so yeah. then the, the um, essay question would be, explain how a stock could go down and you could still make money on selling a naked put. Give me a scenario about which that could occur. Well, Dale, that's what I'm trying to hope to learn today. That was, all right, I've re at least I know I've reached the limit of your knowledge on this. So can, you can't think of a scenario by which a uh, stock could go down and you could still make money on selling a naked put? Um, no, I mean, I, I can think of it. I just, I can see how if somebody is, um, if you're bearish on the stock, and you sell a put, um, and it's going, and it going down, or maybe you buy a put on it going down. And it actually does. I don't know, Dale. It's a shallow pool. <laughs> you're bluffing. You're, you're yeah, I'm oh, bluffing. yeah, I'm bluffing. You're figuring yeah, it. Bluffing. If I talk long enough, surely I'll figure out It'll the just right give answer. Up. Yeah, if I just speak forever. Yeah, I, <laughs> I one, I'm a poker player, Chris, and I used to be a professor, <laughs> so I've seen bluffing before. Um, so here's a scenario. If you collect a dollar and it only goes down by 50 cents, you've lost 50 cents on the underlying, but you collected a dollar in the premium when you originally sold the put. So you've yep. still made 50 cents. So in essence, if it goes down less than what you've collected from the put, you've lost, you've still made money. 
here's an example. You collect $3,000 a month and you're renting out this joint. It happens to go down the underlying value $2,000 the first month in its underlying. Well, really 3,000 minus 2,000, you're still up a thousand. If you kind of yeah. look at that as collectively kind of what your asset value is. So that's kind of putting it into a real estate. I know you've dealt with some real estate or at least your dad has in the past. So I figured sure. that would resonate for you. So uh, here's the final, ex your final exam questions. And Kenneth Blanchard, who used to be a, a professor, <laughs> Who, who wrote the one minute manager. And he also wrote the 59 second employee, which was staying one step ahead of the one minute manager. And one of the things he used to always do is he'd, he'd pass out the final exam on the first day of class. And all the other professors said, you can't pass out the final exam on the first day of class. And you know what he told them? Not only am I gonna pass out the final exam on the first day of class, what do you think I'm gonna do the rest of the semester? I'm gonna teach them the answers. Because life's not about making C's, it's about making A's. You tell people what you expect of them and you help them get yeah. there, right? That's it. So our final exam questions are going to be, you know, what is selling a naked put? How does it work exactly? You could imagine, if you will, you're on a, maybe somebody shadowing you on a sales call, some guy that you're coaching around a sales process. He hears that you're in this seven week boot camp, And the first thing you learned was selling a naked put in two or three sentences. How would you explain it to him? If this guy said, Hey, how is, how does that work? Well, what you don't want to do is, is sell a naked put on something that you think is going to go down. You want to, Pick a stock that you feel really positive about that's going to develop in the future over the next 30 to 45 days, which is what you're going to term your contract for. And you want to make sure that the delta is between like 20 and 30. Okay. If you're willing to take that risk. And, what, and what's delta? I don't know what delta is, Dale. Delta. I just, I just know delta 20 equals buy. <laughs> right. Uh, delta is uh, the first thing you've learned about delta is it's how far it is from the strike price. Right. Okay. So about 50 delta is a 50 delta is at the money. So one thing you okay. know about 20 to 30 delta is it's out of the money. So okay. you've told somebody that it's a bullish strategy. Um, I'd also add, and you, I probably interrupted you, so you weren't finished, but I would add to that, it's a way of kind of getting a stock cheaper than what it currently trades at. And yeah. if you think it's a good deal now, wouldn't you rather it, get it? Wouldn't you like it even better if it was cheaper? And so you can slowly sell those naked puts until eventually it gets assigned. And if you add up all that premium you've collected from the naked put, your cost basis is going down. Remember last week, my example of the $100 jacket, right? You like a jacket, it's $100. You say, you know, I like that jacket, but I'd like it even better if it was 90. So I'm gonna sell a put for a dollar, first month, second month, third month, third month it goes down to 90. I have to buy the jacket. So I've collected $3 along the way. Now my cost basis is 90 minus three, which is $87. So it's kind of a way of getting a better deal on something that you kind of would like to have anyway. And uh, why would you say it's called a naked put? Uh, I don't know. If it wasn't naked, it would be covered by something. So if it's covered by something, it's typically called a put spread. Like you're buying one uh, expiration at one price and you're selling another expiration at another price, that would be a put spread. So just selling one leg, it's not covered by anything. So it's a naked put. You know, if you sold a naked call, it's not covered by anything. If it was covered by something, it would be a call spread if it's covered by another option or it'd be a covered call if it's owned by some stock. So that's kind of typically what covered and naked 
means. And so what are your choices if the price goes down and is below your strike price at expiration? Any ideas? What are your choices if the price goes down and is below your strike price at expiration? Well, you can either buy it back. Good. You can buy it sell back. It or extend the contract. You can you can buy buy to close is typically the the verbiage that's used in your sure. broker. Like you sell to open, and that's selling sure. the naked put. Buy to close would be to close it, or you could um, take possession of the stock at whatever its strike price is, or close it, or you can roll it out in time, which gives yeah. yourself more time to be right. Yeah. Um, so those are your, your three choices. And what's Delta? We've already well, I could the, extend the contract. That's what I'm on. But yeah, yep. can roll it out in time. Gotcha. Right. So Delta is how the, there's multiple definitions for Delta, which part, you know, like the English language, sometimes there's uh, multiple definitions for the same word and Delta is, has multiple definitions. The first definition I've told taught you guys that's applicable to you right now is how far away it is um, from the money. Um, and what Delta uh have I suggested that I prefer to sell puts at? Between 20 and 30. Between 20 and 30. Uh, I was telling Bob this week who he was looking at some um, like 60 Delta, which is already in the money for some things he was selling. And I go, well, you just better be prepared for assignment because you got a 60% chance that you're going to get assigned. Yeah. Uh, which means you need to have that working capital and you need to almost be ready for that because you're going to get assigned. Uh, at 20 to 30, you know, 20, you're only going to get assigned 20% of the time or 30% of the time. So you're not going to be as busy as Bob is, you know, selling these in the money puts or calls. So uh, what is theta? Theta is like the daily amount you're going to collect every day uh, is subtracting uh, volatility. It's almost like if you took your daily rent money and divided it as a landlord into a daily amount, it's what you can expect to collect as long as that renter is not uh, is, is living in your in your property. So uh, what are the advantages of being an option seller instead of a buyer? Well, effectively, you're the casino, right? You're, you're, you're not taking chances, you're, you're selling chances. And so like by being the casino, you would probably say uh, odds are in your favor. So there's greater yeah. than a coin flip on all of your trades as opposed to being a buyer. There's uh, less than a coin flip because you're paying some premium to stay in that trade. Um, it's another equivalent being, you know, it's like being the bookie versus as long as you can collect and you've got a good grip group of betters that are going to pay, you know, Vig, Vig is on your side and you don't care as much about who wins, especially if you've spread out your risk there. So uh, when should you close a naked put? I don't know. Okay. Uh, that's why I was telling Brandon uh, that percent of in it, um, a best mm -hmm. practice is to close a naked put at 50% of max value. And I don't always do that, but it kind of lowers your volatility. And like Brandon just, he's captured 75%. You saw it on his portfolio. He's captured 75% of the premium in the first week. Well, why should he wait three more weeks to capture the other 25%? He probably is better yeah. served to, you know, uh, Pareto's law, 80% of the results flow from about 20% of the activities. So find another trade where you can capture 75% in the first week. Now, having said that, if you're a busy guy and you you don't really have time to shop for good deals on options, you know, go ahead, leave three weeks, take 25% of that juice out of it. Nothing wrong with that. But if you need uh, capital, it's best to say, well, let's take it from something that's I've already got 50% yeah, of the profit just, from. Just to keep rolling. Yep. So if I look at um, XME in my portfolio, I'm at 90.8% in it. Yeah. Should I just pull that capital off the table? 
No, you've only captured a little under one uh, percent. So, see, it's when it gets, it's think of it like golf. Uh, the lower the number is, the more you've squeezed out of it. So, if you remember, Brandon's had twenty five percent, which means he's captured seventy five percent. You've only captured two percent. Okay. Well, I, so it's ninety point eight, but it sounds like ten percent. Ninety point. Like nine, nine. So you've 9. captured nine point two percent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. But on the five Apple out of four, trade that I had. Sorry. Sorry, five out of four people aren't good at math. So, um, yeah, I, I had a little brain fart there. Yeah, you got to carry the one day. Like, it's challenging for me. Okay, I got to write it out. Um, but on the Apple trade, if I've captured 36%. Yeah, you, uh, until it gets to 50 or lower. Okay. That's a good time to take it off. So I'm at 36 right now. You've captured 36. So let's say next week you, uh, um, you know, capture another 14%, you know, you could consider taking it off. So is it 50 or higher or 50 or lower? Just 36 uh, is lower than oh, 50. You, you, all right, well, let me share your screen. Yeah, if you're at 36, 36 um, you could go ahead and take, take it off. Let me bring up your uh, portfolio here and look at it here, Chris, number five. So Apple, yeah, you've captured over 50%. So you could very well take that off <clears throat> unless, but unless you've got, you've only got two trades on so far. So until, and you're only at 8% buying power. So, you know, uh, that's up to more you. of my buying power. <laughs> yeah, that's sure. probably your first priority before you start capturing profits. Now, you can always click up here on realized, how, these are realized gains. And as you close something, it'll show up here in realized. And you could also gotcha. look at activity and see exactly what you sold when. And you could also uh, click on snapshots. And every time you visit your portfolio, it makes a snapshot. Or you can create a snapshot. And then you could view your snapshot. You could go up here and make a comment on it. So it's kind of like, uh, just your learning journal on steroids. Gotcha. All right. So th there's that. So when should you, um, so today we're really gonna cover selling a naked call. And what this is, it's a bearish strategy and you can see my screen again, right? No, I cannot. You cannot, okay. Um, let me go back. Um, all right, there we keep, go. All right. So it's a bearish strategy. Um, I prefer selling the 20 to 30 Delta call. So once again, it's the same probabilities that we learned with puts. So if you sell a 20 Delta call, there's an 80% chance that it's going that you're just going to keep the premium and it's going to exercise out of the money. 30 Delta call, there's a 70% chance. So, you know, if you take, if you happen to sell a 25 Delta, you know, there's 12 months in a year, uh, one, at, you know, 25% of the time you're going to get assigned. So you could expect, oh, if you did it for 12 months, three months out of the year, you're going to, uh, it's going to hit your strike price. It's basic probabilities there. If the stock goes up and hits your call, you got three choices. You could either buy to close your option. You could take possession of a short position at the strike price. So if I sold Apple, uh, I don't even know what it's trading at, but if you sold it at 200 and it's trading at 195, if it goes up to 200 um, or even it goes to 205, I'm short at 200. Yep. The third thing you could do is roll the in the money call out in time. So those are your three. So let's let me explain to you what a short position is. So imagine that I borrow Bob's wheelbarrow. I sell Bob's wheelbarrow for a hundred bucks. I hope that I'm able to buy back Bob's wheelbarrow cheaper at some future date. Home Depot runs a special on Bob's wheelbarrow for 90 bucks. I go and buy that wheelbarrow for Home Depot and then I go knock, knock, knock. Hey, Bob, here's your wheelbarrow. I sold the wheelbarrow for 100. I bought it back for 90. 
So my profit is 10 bucks. So in essence, that's kind of a simple metaphor or analogy that describes what short positions are in the stock market. You borrow the stock. It's, it's weird because it kind of turns people's minds inside out. Like, yeah. how, how, could, how in the world could I sell something that I don't own? But they allow it in the stock market. You borrow stock, you sell it, hoping that in the future you're able to buy it back at a cheaper price and then replace whoever you borrowed it from. They frankly don't even know it's gone because you're, the broker's loaning things out um, sometimes without even pre people's sure. permission. So it's kind of a yeah. way uh, they make money a little bit too. So, so in essence, uh, last week I taught you the wheel strategy around naked puts, which in that case, it was sell a put, sell a put, sell a put. The reason I'm saying it multiple times is that you don't get assigned every week. Sell a put, sell a put, sell a put. It gets a sign. You buy the stock, sell calls against the stock, sell calls, sell calls, sell calls. Get assigned, lose the stock. Now you start selling puts again, right? So that was our wheel strategy that we were going to learn last week. Now, this is the opposite of that, which is the reverse wheel strategy. So you, you select, um, let, me, uh, let me use my laser pointer. You select a bearish stock, you sell calls against it, 20 to 30 delta, sell calls, sell calls, sell calls, soon you collect for three months on average, and now all of a sudden you get a sign. So now I'm, I have a short position. In a short position, the number of shares or contracts will show up as negative. So if you sold three calls, now all of a sudden you're minus 300 on your shorts. And then when you turn around and you sell puts against that short stock, I know this is confusing, you sell puts, sell puts, sell puts until it goes down. And once it goes down and hits your puts, then it buys the stock and it covers that short position. And then yeah. now you got nothing. So you start, I'm still bearish on it or I'm bearish on something else. And you start the reverse wheel on something else or, you know, so granted there's some people who are not doing, well, let's do GameStop. So you sell calls on GameStop. Now I'm short yep. GameStop. Now I'm selling puts against it and it covers it. So now I start, if I'm still short GameStop, I could continue the process. So trivia question, when you sell a naked call, what do you hope and ha hope happens to the stock by expiration? You hope the stock goes down, you hope the stock goes up, you hope the stock stays unchanged or A or C. You're hoping the stock goes down or remains unchanged. <laughs> Which is D, A or yeah. C, <laughs> right? Yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. So how, how in the world could a stock go up and we could still make money on selling a naked call? How could that happen? Well, because you bought it for less than, than you sold it for. It could happen because you collected more in premium, premium yeah, than yeah. there was okay. difference between your exercise price and what it's currently trading at. So you make a dollar on premium and it only goes up above your strike by 50 cents. And in that case, you made 50 cents. So here were some trades this past week. OJ's biggest win was CCIV. He was in and out of it three times. Now, uh, you know, he's kind of day trading some of these selling naked puts, which you're free to do. It's not what I'm really teaching or advocating, but it worked for him. Brandis, Brandon's biggest win was Riot. He had a 2K profit. Bob was being the voyeur that he is, was kind of watching other people's trades. And he goes, that's intriguing. I think I'll copy Brandon's <laughs> trade. And he happened, get this, he happened to have a $2,300 win. Now how he copied Brandon's and then made more money than he did, I was, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of like the guy next to you copies off your paper and makes a better grade. How did that, <laughs> How he, 
I don't know how that works. So Nancy had a $300 win on KLAC. It sounds like a radio station, doesn't it? And a $200 win on DocuSign. Todd had a $200 win on BP. Um, I asked him how he picked that trade. He has it in his real portfolio and he likes the dividends around BP. And he had a $200 win on Costco. James had a $70 win on IMVT and Ron had a $50 win on Proc Procter & Gamble. When they were all in the session, they had a chance to kind of talk about why they picked the ones that they did. Um, so your assignment for next week is to sell a naked call on some stock that you're bearish on. Uh, once again, I prefer 20 to 30 delta calls and make at least two to three trades. You're welcome to do more than that, but that's kind of uh, the minimum and put those trades into groups. So let's just, um, let me demonstrate it. And I am, can you see my trade diff? Yep. Thing here. All right, I'm gonna go into uh, my million dollar portfolio and just give me an, an example of something underlying that you would say uh, that you're bearish on? Um, American Airlines. Okay. Uh, AMR, is that it? Do you know? Well, actually, let's do United. Okay. And that's UA, right? I believe so, yeah. UA. Get chain. United Airlines and let me let's go out to the monthlies and then I'm going to go to calls in this case you know they look like they're kind of jacked up a little bit so I can't quite tell uh, the delta here but here's a 10.8 delta and I'm going to assume that maybe 21 the, wait, those are calls those are puts all right, 21.50. I can't even see the strike price on those. So well, I don't know why they're jacked up. It's probably because the market's closed, right? Uh, get chain. Let's see if this is uh, American. And um, your dogs oh, are barking. A minute. Sorry, go ahead, man. That's all right. All right, I'm gonna give you an example of one uh, that, see what it looks like that I'm bearish on, which is, uh, you know, some of the casinos. So, you know, I can't imagine people hanging out in casinos right now with COVID, but I guess they are. Um, but I heard Jeffrey was down there. He said it was a ghost town. So uh, let's look at this. Here's a 22 Delta. And so these are on calls on this, strike so 22.3 i'm going to click on um, sell here and then uh, one contract and so i'll click on uh, submit there and then i'm going to go here and i'm going to click on these three dots and i'm going to put it into naked calls so that's uh, really a demo of what selling a naked call is about and gotcha. you've got these group stats here, Chris, so you can eventually see what your win rate is and what all your group stats are. You could go into trends and you could see your ROI of how you'll stack up against uh, the NASDAQ as well as S&P. So my million dollar challenge, you know, I'm trying some things here that I wouldn't always do in a real portfolio, but I was shorting GameStop. So as you can see, I, I took this huge drawdown, right? But then when I started getting right, being correct, boom, I came up here and caught up. So that's one of the things. The other thing is I'll, I wanted to show you that I think is a cool feature is to come up here and go into analytics and go into ROI projections. And this shows that I've averaged in this simulation, 3.6% per month. So it just kind of shows you over time, if I'm able to, to sustain that level at that rate, kind of what I could have if I project that into the future. So that's kind of a, a cool couple features on trade diff. And so um, anyway, so next time, what you'll learn is the poor man's covered call, which is a bullish strategy. And the reason it's called poor man's is it because it takes less capital to get involved. And so 
pay particularly close attention to that because my guess is in your real account, we're going to have a few of those. So it's not, what do they call it on radio where you kind of after this commercial mess, they kind of give you a tickler or something, right? So you'll, you'll, so you won't change the channel. Yeah. Well, Dale, I, I appreciate the demo, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the trades first thing tomorrow morning as soon as the market opens. Cool. Um, thanks for setting some time aside, man. Uh, I, uh, I gotta wrap this up. Cool. Uh, it's my wife knocking on my window. Say hello to JJ for me. If you think I of will. other questions, uh, post them in Slack. Um, you know, hit me up. All right, buddy.